Hello, and welcome to the Coringo Technology Network. I'm Jim Dutton, Chief Software Architect here at Coringo Incorporated. You may have heard of us before. We are the leading provider of cloud and object storage software, which serves as the basic infrastructure for a number of scalable uh, storage products, including the Dell DX6000 platform. In this series of video tutorials, I will be demonstrating some of the technology secrets of Castor, Coringo's scalable distributed object storage cluster. As an introduction to the internal operations of Castor, uh, we're going to use a neat little tool called the Castor Log File Viewer, which will allow us to visualize how messages are passed back and forth between the different processes uh, in order to store and retrieve data. We'll start by viewing a syslog file captured from Castor uh, while it performs some simple write and read requests, which were sent by uh, a single client in this case. A Castor cluster consists of one or more storage nodes, like the one you see simulated here. A storage node is just a server with a CPU, some memory, a network interface, and of course, some disk storage. All storage nodes in a cluster execute exactly the same code. Castor is a symmetric distributed system. The hardware itself can be any x86 compatible computer, uh, anything from inexpensive commodity computers to reliable high performance servers, uh, even mixed in the same cluster if you like. Here we see a cluster of four nodes. Uh, they are labeled with their IP addresses. Data is stored and retrieved using HTTP, the core protocol of the internet. The client, in this example, the little green dot at the bottom of the screen, um, is writing data to the cluster by issuing HTTP POST requests. Let's back that up and slow it down in order to give you a better idea of what's actually going on here. The client first chooses uh, the dot .114 node as its initial point of contact. Uh, it could have chosen any of them. There are no special storage nodes. Castor implements an intrinsic load balancing algorithm. Uh, in this case, you see the 114 node uh, has decided for reasons of its own that it isn't the best storage node to handle this particular request. So it responds to the client's posts uh, with a 301 response, which in HTTP parlance is uh, a redirect. The client then repeats the post request to a second node, the dot .111 node, which immediately responds with a 100 uh, continue response, telling the client to proceed with the data transfer. Before the 111 node can actually carry out the post request, it must first check that the client has permission to perform this operation. The looping get requests you see here uh, show the node reading from itself to determine if there are post restrictions. Since I have not set up any permissions for this particular demonstration, the 404 responses uh, indicate that there are none. At the end of the post request, a 201 response is sent back to the client, which indicates all the data has been written and uh, the response includes a UUID, a universally unique identifier for the newly stored object, uh, which can be used later to retrieve the stored data. But the cluster isn't finished yet. To, uh, to ensure your objects are kept safe, even in the case of hardware failures, Castor maintains two or more replicas of the stored object. By default, these replicas are automatically made by the cluster uh, very shortly after a write completes. By the way, the term replica indicates uh, in Castor all of the copies of a particular object. There is no special original. They're all replicas. Here we see a second post request from the client, resulting again in a redirect. But while the second write is occurring to the 111 node, you see the 114 node makes its own get request uh, to read the object previously written uh, by the, the original post request. The post from the client and the get from the uh, 114 node are executed concurrently by the 111 node. 
each caster node can run many hundreds or even thousands of concurrent requests. The 111 node retrieves the data and returns it to the 114 node, which then makes an exact replica of the, of the object. Let's allow the writes to finish. Now that you know what you're looking for, you can see the posts and the gets occurring uh, in order to write the data and then replicate it. Next, the example application reads the object uh, it, it just wrote using, of course, the get request. Again, the application may choose the initial contact node in any way it pleases. Uh, it isn't necessary to contact a node that actually stores the data that you're looking for. The cluster will locate those nodes and uh, actually redirect the client to the appropriate node. Not just a node that has the replica, but the best node to uh, retrieve and uh, carry out this request. So you see the 301 coming back from the 114 node here. The client will redirect the get, in this case to the 111 node, getting the 200 OK response uh, and the uh, actual data that comes back. Mm -hmm.